in this segment is Carrie Blessing. She's a candidate for the Jefferson County Commission out of the Shepherdstown District. Her opponent is Kara Keyes, who we have met previously. Carrie, good morning to you. Thanks for coming in. Good morning. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. It's wonderful to have you. Yeah. I understand you have a little experience in this industry. Uh, oh, yeah. Um, I used to have a radio show uh, after I graduated from Shepherd. Um, I took the Friday night slot at WSHC, mm -hmm. and I named it Life on Mars as a tribute to the Duke, David Bowie. Uh -huh. um, but I played all kinds of music, blues, folk, and everything in between. And around that time, I started working at the Opera House venue when Larry Cumbo owned it. So it was cool because artists that were playing that night or that weekend could come down to the studio, and I would interview them on the air. Mm -hmm. um, and it was it was cool too because um, they would talk about their passion, their music, their work, um, but also interacting with people that I wouldn't otherwise interact with, especially on that level. So, cool. long story short, um, we had new management come in, um, not the current management because Kevin is the current manager and he's wonderful, um, but this guy had come in. And he wanted to push out all of those community volunteers. Some of those guys have been there for a decade or more. Um, he bought a $15,000 automation system with all the top radio hits. But, you know, WSHC has always been known for its eclectic variety. Sure. Um, so I talked to some of the other hosts that I was with at the time, and they assured me they weren't going to be pushed out. But I thought to myself, um, you know, maybe it's time to take a break and pick up another project, work on something else. Um, so instead of going to my radio show that week, I went out and had a beverage with a friend of mine, and that's when I met my husband. Oh, cool. Yeah. So uh, to that, um, I, I will just say that in the same way that WSHC risked losing its identity, um, the character of Jefferson County is at risk of losing its identity with all of this rampant and reckless development. Um, and I think as we sit here today talking about the future of our community, one of the most crucial issues is our groundwater resources mm -hmm. with the development on the rise um, and not having a groundwater assessment since 1991. How can we permit all this development without knowing the groundwater resources we have? Carrie, have you run for office before? No, this is my first time. What uh, eventually pushed you to the point where this is the moment you had to run? Well, it's interesting. I've been, um, I'm a law lifelong Jefferson County resident. I've been very involved in my community, my church, um, president of the Shepherdstown Community Club. I take care of Morgan's Grove Park. Um, I, I've always been uh, very participatory in town halls and public hearings. So when the appeal was denied in August uh, for the two commissioners who were removed, um, I was actually asked to run. Um, so I went back and forth with it. I talked about my I talked to my husband about it, um, and I thought, you know what? Why not? I think it's maybe one of the greatest services you can do for your community, um, regardless of the outcome, right? Um, you know, I've met so many great people doing great things in the community, and I get to bring those experiences back uh, to Shepherdstown, to the community club, to the park, and and working with other people. So in a way, I've, I feel like I've, I've gained something already. You know, it's been a great experience. You're running as a Democrat? That's true. Uh, yes. Why are you a member of the Democratic Party? Well, you know, um, I'll be honest. I I was registered for an, as an independent for a long time. Um, and I don't feel like particularly this position, or really any position, um, but especially county commission, is a partisan thing. So I don't really focus on the letter next to my name. Um, if I'm elected, I represent everyone. The uh, current commission is all Republican, as I understand it. Yes. Um, Jefferson County itself is a breakdown of Republicans, Democrats, and Independents. Do you have the numbers on that? Uh, let's see. I think it's I think it's two thirds to a third, um, something in that range. Um, I'm not exactly. I haven't really been focusing on those numbers. I've just been mm -hmm. getting out and talking to people. I've I've talked to independents. I've talked to Republicans, Democrats. Um, and so I'm not really focusing on that. But what are you hearing are the main concerns of Jefferson County residents? Um, definitely, uh, definitely the way that the county commission has has been making decisions. Uh, development is a huge one. Solar, uh, industrial solar is a huge issue that keeps being brought up. 
Um, and people are concerned about the water. You know, um, I don't know if you guys know this, but last year, Harpers Ferry lost their municipal water supply and they had to switch to emergency water supply when um, Elks Run dried up. I and was not familiar with yeah, that, no. Yeah, so um, it's a serious concern. I know that Charlestown Utility is running water lines out to Summit Point because there was a development out there. They, they drilled twice. Now, I don't know how deep they drilled, but they drilled twice for water and didn't hit water. So it's a concern. Bill, you're familiar with that as a former Berkeley County Commission president. I'm, and I also am very familiar with, what, uh, with groundwater. I've spent a lot of time looking at it. And it's, uh, in this karst topography, it is not unusual to drill. And if you get drill below three or 400 feet, uh, the chance of getting good water, you may get old water, but it's very limited in uh, the quantity. Uh, so if you don't get in the first few hundred feet, it's, uh, you might as well start drilling somewhere else. I, we've mentioned this a couple so times on, on radio, and I think we mentioned it to uh, well, your opponent as well. Uh, Berkeley County has put into place uh, about 20 years or so ago a requirement for any development to do a historical assessment of the of the water availability, uh, and it's still in place. It's an ordinance. So anything more than 1,500 homes, 15 homes, I'm sorry, 15 homes, you have to look at the the w groundwater budget in terms of what it has been historically. And so that means if you have a wet year, you'd still be able to look at the drought here. Uh, the worst thing you can have is uh, a new development come in and all the old homes run out of water. So mm -hmm. it is a real problem. And karst topography is very, very, very difficult uh, to predict where the water is. So when you talk about, I wrote it down because it, it it just flows well. Rampant, reckless development. What do you have in mind? Um, well, I think about the, uh, the industrial solar facilities that are being put in, and um, I think there's about 1,500 homes uh, being built in Jefferson County right now, and it puts a significant strain on our, our resources and our infrastructure included. Now, I've been told a lot of the homes that are going in certainly like down on Flowing Springs Road and in that area that those were actually approved decades ago and sure. are just now being built sure is is that the case and if, if so how do you stop that well um, you know zoning zoning is um, discriminatory by nature but when we talk about zoning it's it's not taking away people's rights it's to protect our neighbors, families, farmers. Um, so, you know, working within those zoning regulations, um, dissolving the buy right uh, that's included in the comprehensive plan. Um, those are those are ways to, to deal with that, I guess. So, where does the tax base come from? The we've got alternative drum beats that are happening, right? That we don't have enough money to pay the teachers properly, and right. that we all of that. So. We've, we've got to have a tax base in, in Jefferson County and Berkeley County. We're talking about Jefferson County right now. Right. Um, that's got to come from somewhere. So if it's not going to come from development. Which is a problem. The, where is it going to come from? Right. But, excuse me a second. Development houses do not pay for themselves. Well, no, which is where I was going to go exactly. is, is, the next, Sorry, yeah. is, is the next step. Yeah. So if it's not going to be housing, then it's going to be industry. And I don't hear a lot of support for industry in, in Jefferson County either. Um, well, I, you know, I support industry. I support the right kind of industry. Um, Which would be? Well, I we, mean. We warned you he was coming me, at you. Kat. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> let me just back up. You know, one of the first things we need to do is reinstate the impact fees. I don't know. I mean, it's unconscionable that we took those impacts from the developers and, as you say, put that burden on the taxpayers. So that's something that absolutely needs to happen. Um, but then. What, it, what were you saying just now? Um, About where does the tax base come from? Right. Do you, so you the, support yeah. industry, the yeah. right kind of industry? So right. what would that be? And what would that be? Um, you know, I mean, you can think about manufacturing jobs. You can think about advanced manufacturing. Think 3D printing. Um, but let me back up. The infrastructure that we have needs to be able to support those industries. So broadband expansion is a conversation we've been having for so long, and it's so it's it's needed um, because not only does it support educators, families, small businesses, 
um, but it also supports low impact jobs such as remote work. Um, so looking at the infrastructure, broadband, um, the groundwater, those things, uh, we need to prioritize our community and when we prioritize our community that means prioritizing infrastructure, um, infrastructure that we all rely on. So you know, um, I, I really think that Jefferson County is well suited for agritourism, agro, agribusiness, um, and in in ways that you know might seem outside of the box. But you know, community supported agricultural centers, um, tying agriculture and local foods in, more into the local economy. We can do it. You know, we're just not we're not thinking in that way. So I'd like to reshape that conversation. But going back to John's point, and we'll use uh, Rockwell as an example, uh, do you consider Rockwell to be the type of business that we should be recruiting in Jefferson County? Yeah, so I, I, I think that's an interesting uh, conversation. I've worked in factories, um, and you know, I know what it's like to need a job that other people might not consider as good. Um, but you know, when I was working in Kearneysville at Royal Vendors, we had folks that were driving up from Augusta, Wardensville, um, Romney, even McConnellsburg, Pennsylvania, to work these jobs. So for me, I wonder, in terms of Rockwell, um, how many of those jobs that are being filled are being filled by people doing the same thing, just as Jefferson County residents are driving over an hour for better, better wages and better benefits. I mean, that's what it is. People, we need better wages and better benefits, jobs that align with, with our values as well. So... But so, so do you support Rockwell as a type of industry in Jefferson County? I'm, I'm not sure I got an answer on well, that. Well, Rockwell's here, so, you know. Um, but would you bring another type of manufacturing facility like that to Jefferson County, having seen Rockwell in action for the last several years now? That, that's, that would be really um, circumstantial, I think. You know, we haven't really seen the impacts of Rockwell. Um, you know, again, that groundwater assessment would, would help to shed some light on that. Uh, they use a lot of water. Um, and when there's no rain, there's no water filling those retention ponds that they claim to reuse water and, and regenerate water. They're, draw, they're drawing from the groundwater supply. So, um, and, in, and also in terms of Rockwell, again, I, I'll just bring up, I, you know, I don't know who's filling those jobs or, or how they calculate those numbers. Um, I think I heard something about electricians being paid $36 an hour. And for mm -hmm. me, I think that's a really low wage for an electrician. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, I'm, I, I'm, I'm open to hearing anything, but, you know, not until I see, see the facts. Carrie Blessing is our guest here on the program, candidate for Jefferson County Commission in the Shepherdstown District. You're about to ask, Mr. Gilstrap. Well, I, so as, as a county commissioner, yes. what, is, what do you see your role as facilitating what you're talking about? Because I... I'm going to guess there's not a lot of pushback on bringing broadband. Nobody's saying no, absolutely oh, not. Right. I don't want yeah, bro broadband. Sure. So that, that's that's ecumenical. Everybody's everybody's on board with that. So as a county commissioner, what do you see your role to be to make these things happen? Well, I think one of the most important things that um, that anybody at any level of government can do is not just working across the aisle, working with people that you might disagree with on other issues, but also working very closely with your local delegates. Uh, representatives in Charleston, um, and just working with the community and and getting it, getting the work done. Using that as a platform, what do you consider your strongest virtue as a county commissioner? My strongest virtue virtues are interesting. My son is working on a an essay for the Knights of Columbus on virtues and yeah. elected officials. So um, we were talking about you know we were talking about that. Um, you know, I think it's important to, to be an active listener, to really hear what people are saying and not just be prepared to, to rebut or anything like that. Understanding what the citizens want. Um, you know, empathy is one I think that gets overlooked. You know, it, it, it sounds soft, but it's true. Being able to understand people's experiences, life experiences, cause they're going to be different from mine and yours, you know, um, so I think those are two really important virtues, uh, being honest and holding yourself accountable. It's really important to take responsibility for, for the things that you do and say. Yeah. You mentioned groundwater a couple of times. You mentioned broadband. Yes. Uh, Jefferson County, like a lot of counties, have problems. Uh, 
what do you consider to be the the most significant thing that you have to address that would be probably very difficult at the same time? Um, I th I think um, well I, I I'm not sure if you're looking for a specific answer or something more broad. Pacific. Yeah. Specific. Yeah. I I think the groundwater is probably my top priority. Top room, okay. Yeah. Let's talk solar in Jefferson County, sure. Carrie. This is obviously an issue that has gotten a lot of attention and has stirred quite a lot of emotional reactions yes. as well. Uh, and as I understand it, many of the regulations that were put in with solar were put in by county commissioners who later reversed, came out against solar. Mm -hmm. And some of the sitting county commissioners complained that they've kind of left them holding the bag the way they handled that situation. So your thoughts on solar and what Jefferson County should do about it, if anything? Well, I think it's interesting. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I know that in that first first approval of the amendment, there's there's been some take back like, oh, we didn't we didn't want to vote for that. Um, not understanding the implications of of that amendment. And so I think it takes most importantly for myself just being very informed and in doing my homework on the issue. Um, as far as what we can do now, we have five current projects on the table. Um, I am not sure where those will stand. I, I do think that the community has an opportunity to turn back the tide on at least a few of those projects. I know that there are some uh, lo civil lawsuits. Uh, there's one in the Supreme Court right now. Um, so depending on what happens with that one, um, will determine how the second one proceeds and then those other three projects it's really um, in the hands more of the surrounding property owners should the county restrict what areas of the county absolutely. can be absolutely. used for solar yeah absolutely um, you, you know rural zoning should remain rural um, and i disagree with by right zoning um, allowing solar installations without because by right, you are overlooking public hearings, you're overlooking public comment, and all those other restrictions that are in place with zoning ordinances, um, you know, in order to keep people honest. So, I got the impression you said you're, you're inferring you'll be against solar panels in rural areas. Yes. Where would you put them? Well, that's a good question. I mean, I think we have a lot of opportunity for um, impermeable surfaces, surfaces that have already been degraded, um, you know, in order to facilitate solar. But ultimately, I don't agree with utility scale solar. I think it's important to make the distinction between utility scale and community scale solar. And I totally support community scale solar. Uh, but utility scale solar is is not appropriate for Jefferson County. So in I'm sorry. Go, going back to uh, industry, uh, are you do you support TIFs and pilot programs? You know, I'm not I'm not super versed on TIFs. Um, I'll be honest about that. Um, the pilot programs, yeah, not so much. Um, so you're not support pilots. Yeah. Okay. The Wall Street Journal last week had an article on what they're calling agrivoltaic farming, which, yeah. which is um, a misnomer. Yeah. Farming among the uh, solar plants. There's it's the, the solar farm. So you have the, the solar panels, and then you have sheep and goats. And actually, it's being used uh, in France a lot, where they're growing grapes for for vintners sure. which you support in theory I, I don't i'm not a farmer i don't know how well this right. works but in theory when you can have the two exist together where you're actually growing things and you're you have the solar farm in in theory is that something you could possibly support do you think i mean i i think that's a great concept and that's something that i would definitely need to have more information about um in terms of how it really functions and how uh, how that's accomplished, but I, I do think that's a great idea, um, and it would be a great way uh, to support farmers and keep them on their land. Um, I would just need to have more information about that. Carrie, we have about a minute left. I'm going to turn the microphone over to you for that minute okay. and talk to the audience. Tell them about yourself and why they should vote for you. Okay. Well, um, I'm a lifelong resident of Jefferson County. I will not vote for utility scale solar in Jefferson County, and I understand that when a vote comes up, I must vote with my conscience, and that ties back to my responsibility to the citizens of Jefferson County. I cannot um, 
and I understand the current comprehensive plan is still being edited, but I cannot vote for the current draft. Um, I would and would have been working on it. Also, uh, my first priority um, would be to protect our natural resources and to protect the rural character of Jefferson County. So if you want to vote for change, vote blessing. Thank you. Gary, thank you so much for coming in. It was great to meet you. Yes, you too. And we look thank forward you. to seeing you at our candidate forum as well. Yes, I'm looking forward to that. Thank you. We'll be doing uh, candidate forums on October the 15th and on October the 22nd. Both of those will be held at the Berkeley County Commission Chamber meeting room, just uh, like it was when we were doing the primary elections, uh, too.